I'm Kirk Hansen, Executive Director of the Markala Center for Applied Ethics at Santa Clara University. Uh, we have as our guest here today, Randy Gausman, who is a seasoned financial executive, uh, CFO, Vice President of a company that ran into a major incident of, of uh, corruption, fraud, bribery in China. And he's going to help us understand how such an incident emerges, uh, why it occurred, and the aftermath for a company, the impact on a company uh, of such an incident, and the personal impact uh, of that on your life. So, uh, delighted to have you with us, Randy. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, you're an MBA uh, uh, from uh, USC you're right, correct. with a financial certificate uh, from University of Michigan. That's correct. Very good. That'll, right. that'll help us with the faculty at those institutions. Okay. Right. Good. Um, well, tell us how this fraud uh, emerged and, and was it really a serious uh, incident? And, and, and maybe that doesn't make any difference whether it was serious or not, but Tell us a little bit about the emergence. Well, uh, the company had uh, formed a joint venture in China with a uh, state-owned enterprise, mm -hmm. um, and the company owned uh, seventy percent of the joint venture, and the state and the state asset committee in China owned the other thirty percent. Mm -hmm. And after the first full year of operation, uh, as we you know as we closed the books to to begin to report. Um, myself and my controller noticed some unusual activity in certain of our financial statements mm -hmm. from that subsidiary. And uh, so I asked my internal audit team to go over there and do some more detailed analysis. And as a result of that analysis, we found that we had uh, possible uh, uh, violations of the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Mm -hmm. And upon further uh, analysis, um, I informed the audit chair of our audit committee of the board, and uh, shortly thereafter the company launched a full investigation. And you did the investigation yourself, I understand. Uh, I was the facilitator. What we did as, as appropriate, we hired outside counsel mm -hmm. and another independent big four firm to uh, do the forensic accounting mm -hmm. analysis work. So, so that there was no, no uh, sense of impropriety. So you discovered it, you launched the investigation, did you then notify authorities? Uh, after a period of about three to four months, uh, when we were sure, had more evidence that we had a real issue, then we uh, notified the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission because the company was a public company. A public company right. that, that mm -hmm. you were required to, to do that. So that set in motion a whole U.S. government process because well, of we, a foreign we, practices uh, violation? Yeah, well, we did, uh, you know, working with our counsel, outside counsel, um, we uh, informed both the SEC and the DOJ our process that we were going to, to do to complete mm -hmm. the investigation. So we continued the, investi in, the investigation independently and continued to report to them the results of our findings mm -hmm. in, during the investigation. So the government didn't f felt that we had we were doing the right thing, and we were uh, very transparent in our reporting to them. So they did not uh, uh, see the need to do an independent investigation on top of the one that we had already launched. So you went through, you found the payments, you verified them. You were penalized by the government. The company was penalized. Uh, it, yeah, after a two and a half year it was actually over a little over two and a half years of investigation and remediation, we came to a settlement with the DOJ and the SEC which resulted can combined uh, between the two agencies almost three million dollars in fines and disgorgement of profits. For a company that was how uh, about, about 85 million in revenue. So that was a substantial hit. Substantial hit. Substantial hit. Plus in addition to that we had incurred about 4.2 million dollars of professional service fees pay, you know, pay, you know, mm -hmm. to pay our lawyers and accountants to, to perform the investigative work. Let me ask you about your professional lesson from that and your personal lesson. Professional lesson, is that what a company has to do? It has to jump on uh, anything it finds that might indeed be an improper payment? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, when you have a, when you have a, a suspicion that there's something wrong, it, it's incumbent upon the CFO um, and, and I was also, since we did not have internal general counsel, I was also the chief compliance officer mm -hmm. of the company. 
and it was incumbent upon me to uh, look into it and, and report my findings to the uh, to the audit committee. And once I did that, then the audit committee took you know the overall corporate governance control of the process. Mm -hmm. But I acted as the facilitator for the audit committee to make sure that the investigation um, was complete and and went to the conclusion that that, that mm -hmm. it did. This was only a year after you joined the company, or? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, one year. And now you made the comment in a seminar we just did here that, that this sort of derailed what you thought you were going to be doing as a CFO. Well, yeah. And when, focused your, your activity completely differently. Yeah, when I, was, uh, when I joined the company, I, uh, you know, I saw an opportunity to help this, it was help this company uh, grow and make you know, additional acquisitions and expand worldwide. And uh, with you know, after this started, basically, I mean, I'm still the CFO, still did all the quarterly mm -hmm. conference calls and financial compliance and all that. But my, what became more and more of my job was to get through this investigation, get it through to a conclusion. So in some ways, I kind of became the uh, you know hitman troubleshooter for uh, for the uh, for the audit committee. Now you said that that you felt that destroyed your ability long term to be CFO for the company? Well, out of these investigations, um, you often discover and learn of unpleasant things and, and the role that various people in the company had in, in um, promulgating these, these problems. And uh, the, the CEO of the company was um, he had been the founder of the company and was Chinese and, and owned a significant amount of shares in the company. And uh, that, as this proceeded, it kind of damaged our relationship. So in the end, I knew um, that was highly unlikely at the end of this process. Um, you know, my, I didn't have a long-term career with the company. Plus, plus in addition, uh, shortly after we started this process, we started to put in motion the uh, uh, plan to actually sell the company. Mm -hmm. So I had this investigation going, plus I was involved in working with the CEO and the CTO of the company to uh, uh, you know, sell the company, mm -hmm. meeting with potential buyers and working with them through all their due diligence that they were doing. Of course, this FCPA matter was a significant due diligence mm -hmm. item for them. And And you never had the the thought, hey, I ought to just get the hell out of here? No, no. I made, uh, when, when this started, I had some very, um, you know, uh, personal and stifle conversations with the audit chair, and, and I made a commitment to him that, um, and his, his successor uh, that I would see this through to the end. I felt that it was my obligation to, um, to the shareholders, to the mm -hmm. board, and uh, to the employees and customers of the company. Mm -hmm. And you'd do it again? I wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would do it again. Yeah. Um, I just, it's, that's the moral compass that I have. Mm -hmm. Now, is that the CFO's uh, uh, lot? Is that they have to be ready to do that if indeed uh, well, they you know, face a case like this? Er, early in my career, I, had a, I was working for a, a large company uh, in San Francisco and uh, and I was uh, I was working on the corporate staff, and uh, one of the division's controllers I had a conversation with, and because we had some financial issues, and and he said, Randy he said, you know, if you're going to be a strong financial officer, you got to be willing to put your job on the line every day you go to work, and that always stuck with me. That um, you got to have integrity, um, mm -hmm. you got to have ethics, you got to have this moral compass, and and uh, so. That's just who I am. Those are my my values. Those are my core values, and uh, I never, I never, uh, you know. There's times I, I never never thought about leaving, but there are times I ask myself, you know, why the hell am I put myself through this? <laughs> why? But, I mean, then, but then I got over it, you know, and I moved ahead. You know? mm -hmm. And it was simply your lot that that at that point yeah, that was know, what you, you were know, called to do. You're, uh, you know, you don't always get to choose everything in your in your as your career evolves and. Uh, but the one thing I've always done is I'd see things through to the end, you know, whatever that end may be. You know, it's, people count on you for that, right? Thank you very much for being with us, Randy. You're welcome. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you.